Okay, good morning, good afternoon. My name is May Shotoy, the ASAP Executive Director. I would like to welcome everyone to the first seminar session of uh, today. So we are going to start the agenda in the next 10 minutes. And I would like to welcome all the AFSA members uh, who join Zoom webinar link and also uh, the audiences from the public who join on the YouTube streaming link and the WeChat link in China. Thank you very much for your attention. So before we start the agenda today, I just would like to give you a brief instruction so that everyone can enjoy the most of the session today. All right. So we have quite tight agenda today, and so our speakers and panelists they prepare many information to share with you today. So please feel free to drop the questions for the one who joined Zoom webinar link. You can drop the question in Q&A box. Okay, for the one who joined from YouTube and WeChat, you can drop the questions in the chat box. When you drop the questions, please address the name on the one who you would like to ask the question and also please address your company name. All the questions will be recorded and we will retrieve all the questions and send to the speakers and panelists. They will help to answer the questions and we will put all the questions in the summary report and summary report will be shared by the next two weeks. Okay. So right now, uh, if you have anything related to the technical issues, so if you cannot hear me well, or you have an uh, issue with the connectivity first, please check with your connectivity. Okay? And then if you still have um, a problem from our side, please feel free to put in a chat box so that we know. Okay? So I hope everyone is already uh, connecting to the platform. Let us see how many died already. Okay, from Zoom webinar, we have 54 attendees join, and another 53 from the YouTube link. Welcome, everyone. So, in the next, I think in the next 10 minutes, in the next five minutes, we will start the first agenda. All right. Okay, I think we are almost ready. I'm counting 50 seconds down to start your first agenda. Okay, so I think it's the time for us to start the first session. So let me start to invite um, Mrs. Alison Tian. She is the Executive Director of the China National Sea Trade Association, or the NSTA. So, Ms. Alison, please. So, thank you, Dr. May, for your. APSA members, CRC members, guests, and friends. Welcome. Mrs. Allison, we cannot hear you well. Can you please uh, try to speak louder? And please turn on your camera so that we can see you. I open my camera. Now it's okay? Not yet. Huh? 
Hi, good morning. We start receiving the, the chat from our members. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I think uh, Ms. Anderson has small technical issue. She will be back to us soon in uh, doing her presentation. So we do not want to keep it the session delay. So first, let uh, I would like to invite Mr. Tahir Salini, ASA president, to give um, opening remark. Mr. Tahir, please. Mr. Tahir, you're on mute. We can't hear you, please. Ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues, and guests tuning in from all over the world. Good afternoon and Eid Mubarak from Pakistan. Thanks to all for joining us from across the world. Indeed, seed is a fundamental input link and starting point in the food chain. And I think it's safe to say that this chain has been put to test in the recent weeks and months. While the governments of many countries has declared farm inputs, including seeds as essential items and thus exempted them from broader lockdown restrictions, but there may be other effects on the business. So that's what the objective of this webinar and dialogue. Industry wants to, to hear directly from the stakeholders and the people on ground. This way, we can not only determine the challenges some of, our, some of us facing or might face in near future, but also share and learn about some potential solutions that are working in other countries. The fact that we have such interest from all over the region and world underlines how important this topic is not only for those of us working for the seed industry, but for the entire food and agriculture supply chain. As the president of EPSA and on behalf of the Asia Pacific seed industry, it is my pleasure to welcome you and to give these opening remarks. This online seminar, which will look at the impact of COVID-19 on the seed business with a focus on a dozen of countries inside and outside of Asia region. The full schedule and agenda can be found on APSA website and the APSA Secretariat will share the link in the Zoom, YouTube and Tension platforms. In our opening session today, we will hear updates from representative of three key national seed associations represents in, representing in our region. They include Ms. Alison Tian from the China National Sea Trade Association or CNSTA, Mr. Salman Aziz Khan from the Seed Association of Pakistan or SAP, and Dr. Shivindra Bijaj from the Federation of Seed Industry of India or FSII. Following these, represent these presentations, we will have a panel discussion led by private sector representative from these three countries. Panelists includes myself, who will represent my company, Haji Sons Private Limited, and I will be joined by San Diego Jiang of Binol High Tech Seed Co. Limited, China, and Ms. Ziabo Zhou of Kingfa Heixing Seed Company Limited in China. Representing the Indian seed private sector, we have Mr. Arthur Santosh of Indian uh, Indo-American hybrid, uh, hybrid Seeds and Mr. Santinil Nathan of Asian Hybrid Private Limited. In the second and third sessions that will be held tomorrow, we will have representation from several other countries, including Japan, Korea, Thailand, the Philippines, Australia, the United States, the Netherlands, France, and Chile. I encourage you all to visit the APSA website for the full agenda. The link will be provided for you soon. When APSA and CNS, T, CNS TA announced this seminar, we got a lot of interest on social media, not only from APSA members, but from the general public likewise. 
as we have many hundreds of people joining in we have not able to address all comments and questions on each platform due to limited time but we'll do our best and we'll also try to address any important question we might have missed via email therefore i would like to encourage you all to listen carefully take notes and write down any question you may have for our speakers and uh, panelists and share them with us when you prompt to do with that let's proceed with the program thank you all once again now i invite president of cnsta mr vyabo song for the opening remarks thank you very much okay uh, thanks uh, very much for mr tahi uh, dear mr tahi dear miss may ladies and gentlemen good afternoon uh, first uh, please allow me to extend my warm welcome to all the guests and the audience who participate in the online seminar today on behalf of china national state trade association i'd like to thank apsa for its great support and the cooperation to today's seminar since the beginning of 2020 the COVID-19 has become a global concern, which we all have to confront with. Although many countries have adopted restrictive prevention and control measures to contain the spread of the virus, the epidemic still caused a serious unsafe trade and movement. Food security and sustainable agriculture are facing an even bigger challenge than ever before. As you all know, seeds are globally treated agricultural products, and the international seed trade has increased by 10 times during the past 15 to 20 years. Previous international practices have shown that unrestricted international movement of seed under close bilateral and multilateral cooperation are very important to ensure food security. So I think at this special hard time, strengthening the international collaboration and the communication in the fields of the seed industry is even more imperative to all of us. That is why CSTA and APSA jointly organized this online seminar advocating that the international seed industry should be united to guarantee the state Seed supply chain, food security, and the sustainable agriculture globally, under the conditions of good health and safety protection. Today, we are very honored to invite the experts from certain countries of the National Seed Association and the seed companies. Latest experience on to share their insights on how to ensure the smooth regional and the global seed trade, how to secure food safety and the sustainable agriculture. Also, we will discuss the issue of common concern and the seek opportunities to break through during this online seminar. Finally, I wish the seminar a complete success and uh, sincerely, Hope all the guests and the audience are safe and health. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Tahir Salini, AFSA President, and Mr. Waiko Song, the President of China National Seed Trade Association. Okay, so we are moving to the presentation session. Uh, today we have uh, we are focusing in three countries. So we have representatives from three national seed associations. First, uh, we will start with India, and then followed by China, and then Pakistan. So the topics that you are going to hear today is uh, we they will start with the overview of the seed trade, and then we'll end with the strategy moving forward uh, to cope with the COVID-19 situation on the seed trade. So uh, let's, let me first introduce the, our first speaker of today, Dr. Shivendra Bajal, the Executive Director of Federation of Seed Industry of India, or FSII. Dr. Shivendra Bajal, please. Uh, can you hear me and can you see me? 
Yes, yes, sir. Yes, that's great. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, Dr. May, for the opportunity, and thank you, for, uh, Dr. Tahir, and uh, China Association for organizing this uh, important symposium. Uh, my name is Shivendra Bajaj. Uh, I represent the Federation of Steel Industry of India. So, what I am going to present to you is the impact uh, that the recent crisis has had on the sea trade, in India. and I hope to learn from other countries how we can uh, manage this together. Uh, I'm going to share the screen and uh, uh, let me know if you can, uh, sorry, not this one. Uh, okay. Hang on, uh, just give me a second. I'll, I'll open the presentation. Can you see it now? Yes, yes, doctor. Okay, you can see the slide, sir? Not just, uh, not yet. Not yet, okay, uh, hang on then. Uh, how do I go? It's not open yet. Okay. This one. Yeah. Yeah, I think you should be able to see now. Now it's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So as Dr. May has outlined, uh, we'll be going to present. We'll be presenting the impact of uh, COVID nineteen on the sea trade uh, within the countries. So. Uh, I'm on slide one now. Uh, this is going to be an overview of the seed trade, very, very brief, brief introduction, and what is analysis of the impact on seed trade, and Dr. how do we manage? Dr. Shivendra, I'm so sorry. Can you please click the slideshow mode? Okay. Thank you. Is it okay now? Perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then what is the post-COVID scenario on the seed trade and movement? So, uh, I think the uh, sea trade overview probably is very similar for each country. Uh, it is uh, uh, each country has import and export policies where you have to have import permit for seed and phytosanitary inspection requirements. Uh, India, uh, the size of seed market uh, is about $2.6 billion, although it's not a reliable figure. And uh, India exported seeds about uh, $122 million uh, in 2018-19 and imported roughly around the same amount of seed. Uh, main crops are actually the cash crops, uh, cashew, jute, tea, tobacco, and these are the similar crops as well. The trade partners uh, obviously are some of the European countries like uh, Holland, uh, America and US, Russia, China, and Thailand. And I think uh, I'll uh, straight away come to the uh, main uh, topic of this uh, uh, seminar. What is analysis and what is the impact? So uh, in India, I'm sure everyone has been looking around the numbers uh, for across the countries. So India has have, have had a lockdown um, for since end of March. Actually, uh, recently, uh, since yesterday, there has been a brief uh, opening of the lockdown but it's still not fully opened. Um, so it's been getting a significantly serious situation now. Uh, the number of infected uh, persons with the virus has been rising and actually has been increasing. Uh, as of today, it was 144,000, 4,000 unfortunately have lost life, but the good part in India is that recovery is very high. So almost uh, 60,000 people have recovered. But what is the impact on day-to-day uh, -day life and economies? So because of the complete lockdown for uh, more than two months, uh, it has impacted life. Many of the uh, MSMEs, means the medium and small, medium, micro businesses, enterprises were uh, in the non-essential category. So they are on the brink of insolvency, although the government now has been coming up uh, with a uh, stimulus package to support these businesses and giving some uh, uh, relief to those businesses. 
So what is the impact on the seed industry? Uh, so what happened uh, if we go uh, the day of the lockdown? Uh, there was uh, uh, actually a very short notice of few hours, if I'm not wrong, uh, maybe four hours or six hours notice that uh, country is going into lockdown, which means that essential activities uh, were not uh, clearly defined. And what happened was that agriculture and seed movement was not included as an essential activity. So immediately, our, as, an association, uh, as a federation, our job was to take this matter with the federal as well as the state governments, uh, that uh, we include uh, agriculture and seed trade in essential activities. So basically, we wrote to every state government. And then uh, the good part was that the state governments realized that and they responded that, okay, seed trade is an essential activity. Uh, the opening up of seed plants happened slowly, but uh, it's not, It's not even if, if it is part of essential activity, uh, life is not normal. Uh, I'm sure uh, we have uh, uh, expert panelists in Santosh and Senthil uh, in, in, uh, in this uh, 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 seminar today, and they will be able to give more detail how individual businesses have been impacted, but overall, uh, the plants and sites have been operating with, uh, with fewer staff, uh, less than one third of the staff. And uh, obviously, frequent isolation, social distancing have been, have been uh, at place. Uh, shift work has been uh, adopted. So obviously, uh, it's probably uh, because of these activities, the productivity has gone down to half of the normal time. And then it was not just about the seed trade. And if you talk about the overall agriculture and, and the associated industries with it. So in India, because each state has its own uh, jurisdiction and all, they can open or close the border as per the state laws and requirements. So there was uh, uh, heavy, uh, significant disruption on the movement as well. First of all, the trucks were not available. And then uh, many villages themselves have initiated their own lockdowns, which means even if a truck has a permit to cross through, it, uh, you know, villages have put some barriers uh, not allowing the movement of it. So I think that was a very significant challenge that I think now has uh, coming limping back to some sense of normalcy, but first few days and weeks were really tough. The government has been trying its part. Actually, they started some uh, special cargo and courier services. Uh, Indian Railways started doing some parcel services uh, to, to transport seeds. And then, but still, uh, there were a lot of delays. And then uh, there was a significant delay about the availability of packaging material because uh, not only uh, they, the seed industries and plants were not able to receive those uh, material for, for packaging. And then uh, the delivery of seeds one did not happen because of the different zones that the government have, uh, uh, have uh, put in place, like uh, red zone, orange zone, and green zone. So it's almost impossible to move around red zones have a significant restriction and green zone were a little bit okay. So these were the uh, challenges that have uh, that the industry and seed trade uh, seed companies have faced. Now, the what would be the overall impact on that? Uh, there, because of the lack of movement, the the I would say fruits, uh, cotton, or vegetable uh, farmers across the country have suffered a lot because the uh, prices have plunged. Although uh, one report said that uh, the fertilizer sales have uh, increased by 50%, but I think that uh, was, probably was just to, uh, I would say as insurance to, uh, to stockpile uh, if the stock is not available rather than uh, a guarantee for a good crop. And then the other issue in India was that uh, uh, the labor who could not find jobs, uh, they started moving to their own, uh, uh, their villages and residences. So I think that uh, has impacted and that is uh, causing a significant uh, increase in number of COVID-19 now. Uh, 
the wholesale prices of vegetables have crashed. I was reading an article this morning that uh, uh, the wholesale price of uh, tomatoes and uh, I think there was another crop has are below uh, forty percent below the the produce cost. So if uh, if the cost is uh, one dollar, uh, the uh, the vegetables are selling at uh, sixty cents. So I think uh, farmers are not able to recover their uh, investment costs also. And same, I think, uh, uh, will be uh, true for other crops like soybean. So that, I think, uh, has been a, a major issue. Uh, of course, uh, impact uh, the research and development activities are more or less, uh, stopped. Only essential activities are going on. As I said, that uh, less than one third of the staff has been working. And that too, the movement is challenged, although they have given passes and uh, permits. And uh, uh, export and import of seed has been significantly, uh, significantly impacted. Although we have had a call, uh, video call with the, with the government officials to allow, allow the exports, but they were more interested in uh, export of the produce rather than uh, seed. Because you know India is a big exporter of coffee or jute or other things and spices, and that is a cash crop, cash generation for for the economy. But uh, somehow we were able to uh, explain and manage that you know seed also should be uh, treated favorably for export. But we do not know how much uh, uh, life has been normal right now. I would say it's significantly impacted. Uh, and there has been a very negative impact on the on the finances and the cash flows of the seed companies also, uh, because uh, uh, this has uh, it came in the quarter one where seed companies liquidate most of their sales. Now that has not happened, so I think uh, uh, some of the seed companies are in the credit crunch also. Although government has announced that uh, 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 some measures. But as an as an industry, we requested government to give some credit enhancement scheme to the seed companies, uh, give increase of working capital, and then you know uh, give interest subsidy, and uh, provide some relief on the GST and transport subsidies as well. Uh, but uh, uh, the government did its part. Uh, I think uh, they announced a mega pack of. Uh, on paper, it was uh, $270 billion, and that came about two weeks ago, which pack, that is for the overall uh, stimulus of the economy. And that came out to be roughly 10% of the economy uh, 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 of the GDP. But I think uh, 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 the experts have worked out, it's not, it's not 10%, it's actually 1% of the economy, and rest is about the, rest is about the, a stimulus that anyway would have been given indirectly. Uh, same thing, agriculture uh, was included in the package. Uh, uh, like, as you can see from the slides, a uh, certain amount of funds have been sent up, but most of it is not, not for the short term or immediate gains. These are the long term measures like, you know, logistics, capacity building, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, like packages for entrepreneurs, uh, cooperative societies, startup, capacity building, cold chill facilities, herbal cultivation, uh, operations. So these are the marketing reforms that uh, government, that should have been done over the time so that those have been uh, accelerated. But uh, if you see what is the cash that has gone directly to the farmer or to the, to the entrepreneurs, that is still yet to be seen. I think I have mentioned about this uh, already that uh, uh, some of the some of the facilities that uh, government has provided like Operation Green. Now this is a, Operation Green is about a subsidy on uh, some fruits and vegetables, uh, but it will allow subsidy on transportation, uh, storage, cold storage, capacity building, uh, infrastructure. So so those things have been accelerated, uh, which actually should have been in place anyway, but. Uh, we are yet to see the cash which or direct benefit 
either to the seed industry or to the farmers. So I think that is very should be interesting to see. Although recently uh, I read an article that uh, the government has been thinking to put give cash directly to the farmers, like uh, a, a certain amount uh, per acre of crop that can be that will be given to the farmer uh, and purchased directly from the uh, from the source. So that I think should put uh, cash in the hands of farmer directly. I think that would be a welcome step. So what has happened, uh, change in the industry? I mean, we can see like we are not meeting face to face. Uh, we are uh, meeting virtually, uh, webinars are happening. Uh, obviously seat, uh, health and safety officials or, or experts in the industry have been suggesting ergonomic breaks, social distancing in place and shift work. I think uh, uh, probably uh, Santosh and uh, Mr. Senthil will be able to be more on how they are going to manage their uh, operations uh, in the staff with shift work, social distancing, reduction in staff, how it's going to impact the productivity. So I think that will be a very critical uh, discussion to, to see. Uh, what could be the suggestions? I think uh, one thing we have to see now is that what we have been seeing in India now is a growing sense of uh, nationalism uh, the Prime Minister has called for self-reliance, although he has rightly clarified self-reliance doesn't mean uh, being a self-centered economy, but it will be a, you know, uh, every country I'm sure will be more interested to stimulate its local businesses now. So I think here uh, APSA role will be to ensure that uh, how regional cooperation can happen, how regional trade is not impacted. I think uh, the transparency about issues, how uh, uh, safety norms can be implemented across nations. And then if uh, uh, some kind of green corridors can be established between the countries, maybe it between to the two countries or between a set of countries uh, for the smooth movement of seeds as well as processed uh, food. I think that would be very critical to see how movement of seeds will happen now in post-COVID world. And I think uh, uh, we need to invest more on the now infrastructure and safe storage. And another thing would be to uh, review, I think if APSA doesn't have the data, probably we can uh, do some work to see what are the, what are the uh, regulations regarding the foreign direct investment, FDI, uh, uh, in seeds now. Because every government would be looking forward to uh, you know, consolidate its own uh, interest first. Uh, I think uh, uh, I have mentioned that already, that the government has been proactively looking into sustainability measures, technology advancement, mechanization, artificial intelligence. Uh, the Prime Minister has called for a self-reliant India, you know. Although, uh, so, so there has been certain challenges here now. Uh, some state governments have been asking the farmers uh, not to grow a particular crop. And I give two examples here. Uh, the southern states of Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. In Telangana, the state, the chief minister decided through a video conference that uh, they are going to restrict the sale of corn seeds to a certain area as well as paddy seeds. So basically what they are, uh, because, the, because the demand has plunged, of uh, corn because of low lower consumption of meat therefore the poultry industry is impacted therefore the feed industry is impacted and then it has the, the negative impact has come on the corn seeds so states have are uh, putting some measures in place to to restrict and regulate the planting area of a particular crop in a in a in their region which is very disturbing uh, the other uh, southern state of Andhra Pradesh, uh, you know, started to ban some chili seeds a uh, uh, few days ago. So I think uh, these kind of measures, uh, short term knee jerk reaction would be very, very, uh, uh, I would say, a difficult period for the seed companies to overcome. So I think as an association, uh, we have a bigger role to play to mitigate that. And I, I'm sure APSA as a regional association can certainly co uh, collaborate and cooperate uh, in terms of regional movement and all. So I think that's what my presentation is. I hope I'm on time. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions.
Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Shivendra. I think we learned a lot on the import export trend from India, and also we know that government gives very good support to the seed industry. And again, similar to the survey that we have run in AFSA, that international seed movement is a key issue from India, based on what Dr. Shivendra has mentioned. So again, if you have questions to Dr. Shivendra, Please feel free to drop in the Q&A box for those who join from Zoom webinar, webinar link or the one who join from YouTube link and we chat, you can drop the question in the chat box. And we would like to welcome more than 7,000 attendees from China. And out, uh, outside China right now, we have on Zoom around 82 attendees. And from YouTube, we have another uh, 100 attendees. Thank you very much. All right, we are moving to hear another update from very uh, like key country also in Asia or in Asia Pacific region for the seed industry. So let us hear from Mrs. Alison Tian, Secretary General of China National Seed Trade Association. Ms. Alison, if you are ready, please turn on the camera. Yes, that's perfect. Thank okay, you. thank you, Dr. May. <laughs> So sorry I'm missing the opening uh, ceremony, but now uh, I'm very happy to have uh, the opportunity to update the situation in China. Okay, now I'm sharing my screen. Agenda is same as the Dr. Shavendra. Bajiri from the Federation of Seed Industry of India. So I go straight to the content. So Hi, Alison. I think we cannot hear your voice so clear. If you have a problem with the connection, uh, wait a second. Uh, my It's, it's still not so clear. Uh, and then shall we do like this? Shall we move Dr. Salman first? And then uh, while you are checking your microphone and connection, then we will come back to China again. All right. Okay, so while uh, Alison is checking her uh, microphone and the connectivity, we will move to the next presenter. I think Dr. Salman is standing by, so let us hear now from Pakistan, and then we will come back again to China to hear Miss Alison. All right, thank you very much, Miss Alison. We will come back again to you. So let me introduce Dr. Salman Asif Khan. He is a Secretary General from Seed Association of Pakistan. So Pakistan is also a key country, is uh, according to the Access to Seed Index, it's also clear that there are so many investors outside investing for the seed trade in Pakistan. So let us hear update from Dr. Salman. Dr. Salman, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon uh, to all the viewers. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely grateful to Mr. Sleamy, Mr. White. Mr. Weibo, uh, Dr. May, and EPSA for recording us the opportunity to present a presentation on uh, Pakistan's, uh, 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 the impact of COVID in Pakistan. So without any further delay, I'll just start off the presentation. Here's the uh, agenda, which is the overview of the trade, the brief introduction about the trade relevant policy analysis of the uh, impact of the epidemic, the suggestions, 
as well as the post-COVID scenario and the prospect for seed development and movement. Um, the agriculture of Pakistan, we are basically one of the top producers in the world for rice, sugarcane, cotton, mangoes, and oranges. Agriculture is, of course, the mainstay of Pakistan's economy. We contribute about 19% of the country's GDP and employ 39% of the total labor workforce in the country. Major crops of Pakistan are cotton, wheat, rice, maize, sugarcane, and vegetables, which contribute about 4%, and minor crops that add another 2%. We see the availability pre-pandemic. This is uh, the last year's statistics. Uh, local production was about 400, uh, 543, uh, 094 metric tons. 91% uh, is the contribution of the private sector, whereas about 9% is the public sector's uh, contribution in the seed production. Uh, 31,783 metric tons is what's imported in Pakistan. So that comes to about uh, 577,000 metric tons. Um, this is our seed supply system, which there's a formal system as an informal system as well. The formal system has the public sector and the private sector. Uh, within the public sector, we have the research institutions and the provincial seed corporations, which are uh, ruled, uh, governed by the federal government, uh, the provincial governments themselves. And then we have the private seed sector, which is the national seed companies, and then the multinational companies and the seed importers. And there's, then there's the informal system, which uh, Although it's not really encouraged, it's the farmer's own safe seed, farmer to farmer exchange, and sale to middlemen. Seed trade policy, uh, we have an import policy which requires two years adaptability trials, which are compulsory for any variety of hybrid that's enlisted before import. GMO is not allowed, allowed except for approved traits. Um, the cotton and wheat seed importers is restricted because they're declared strategic crops. Uh, we have import permits, seed analysis, non-GM reports, which are essential requirements for any import. And then there are also crop-based conditions to fulfill and declare on FITOS certificates. Top 10 imported crops include uh, pearl millets, paddy, maize, potato, tomatoes, cucumbers, watermelon, onion, and okra. Uh, there's not much exports, but we do tend to, at, from time to time, export wheat and rice from Pakistan. Uh, main trade partners are the United States, China, Europe, Thailand, and India. The impact of pandemic, well, the statistics were mentioned when we had actually uh, submitted the presentation. Unfortunately, the current confirmed cases are now in excess of 56,000. The recovery cases are about 17 and a half thousand and there's about a thousand casualties unfortunately uh, the lockdown which was announced by the government on the 22nd of march initially we had a strict lockdown although seed was considered uh, as an essential uh, uh, requirement so it was uh, there were no particular uh, restrictions however the transportation other did impact the seed trade and this lockdown has since been eased from the 9th of May um, and uh, the economic slowdown, which according to the projections of the IMF, World Bank and State Bank of Pakistan are now leading to a negative GDP growth. Uh, containment and control, uh, we have lockdowns and designated quarantine areas. Uh, what the government has done is that places, after the ease of the lockdown, places which have the higher uh, percentage of uh, contamination of the virus. They have stricter lockdowns. And then we are also encouraging, encouraging social distancing and the government, the, the federal government, the provincial government, the local uh, bodies have published guidelines to educate the public. Uh, there have been SOPs which have been established to uh, facilitate the operation of businesses during this pandemic because there was a big impact, of course, on the small and small medium organizations. Um, these uh, SOPs include limited operational hours, adequate sanitization, and staff rotation. The economic impact on Pakistan economy is estimated to be equivalent of about 1% to 1.3% of our GDP. The imports are estimated to decrease by 50 to 60 percent. The exports are estimated to reduce by 10 to 20 percent. Uh, employment loss is estimated at about 20 percent. And uh, the economic growth, as I mentioned earlier, is 
a projected a negative 1.5 percent. The impact on life, uh, there has been a, of course, uh, other than psychological impact on, you know, when you're in lockdown, there's also a consumption of product, which has drastically decreased. There have been closures of restaurants, marriages, halls, transportation, banking has been limited, which has also slowed down further the economic activities. Then the impact on the seed industry, the import of maize and vegetable seed has severely impacted and the shortage has led to increase in prices. Also impacted the sowing and crop planning for these upcoming seasons. Um, the spring sowing versus food security. Uh, the, the spring crop has been deeply impacted due to shortage of seed supply. Procurement of the wheat seed has been deeply impacted. Uh, one of the reasons for that was because uh, the federal government and the provincial governments also procured rain for food security. And due to the shortage of labor and transport, it also in, uh, you know, cause difficulty for procurement of the wheat seed for the companies. And this may lead to shortage of wheat seed uh, for the next season. What trends and changes the seed industry have after the outbreak of COVID-19? Uh, home gardening was not possible due to the off season. So that was really impacted season. Whereas uh, the unusual and repeated rains have badly affected the uh, wheat crop, which was, uh, ready for harvest. Uh, work style, virtual meetings have been a feature uh, almost across the world in business organizations. However, the offices have been operating with minimum staff, but various factors impact the communication. Uh, this also includes the uh, internet, uh, the, the different speeds of internet available to people. Uh, protocols for social distancing have been issued. However, there's been a struggle to maintain it due to various circumstances. The lower uh, the, the labor class is not as educated to understand them, so there has to be uh, there has been uh, efforts made to make people understand how important and critical social distancing is in these uh, in this uh, prevailing pandemic. Uh, the labor shortages and limited operating times also make it difficult for institutions, banks, and companies to perform their uh, various activities. Uh, the impact, uh, the lockdown situation has also made the movement of the seed stocks for the last year to the consumer difficult. Uh, the restriction on the airlines, which has only been lifted about four or five days ago, and freight operation domestically as well as internationally has created demand and supply issues, uh, which has resulted an increase in the prices of uh, seed. Um, as you know, vegetable seeds are required to be in stock at least a month or a month and a half prior to the season. And since the, uh, the, the, this pandemic, the importers and exporters cannot ensure these supplies. And the seed freight has also increased by 20%, which also increased the cost of the uh, seed for farmers. Um, to offset these economic impacts, the government of Pakistan, which is, we have had uh, so many economic issues before too, but somehow, we have been resilient enough to weather these storms and the government has taken some of the steps to offset these, uh, the, the economic impact of this COVID again. Uh, the Prime Minister announced a $7 billion stimulus package to offer relief to the economy and the people. $280 billion, uh, 280 billion rupees, I beg your pardon, has been allocated for wheat procurement, around 100 billion for deferred payments for loans for small and medium enterprises, which include about 57 billion package for uh, agriculture sector. The Punjab government um, has also offered a 50 billion rupees worth interest free loans to farmers, crop insurance to about a uh, quarter of a million farmers, and went to uh, 1.2 million sack of seeds for the next year's wheat crop. One of the biggest relief uh, for the labor class has been the SAS emergency program, uh, which offers one time cash assistance of 12,000 to 12 million families. Uh, in addition, 75 million dollars uh, rupees has been allocated for laborers and daily wage earners who lost their job due to the impact of uh, this pandemic. Uh, some of the suggestions uh, which have been uh, projected uh, promote, uh, proposed uh, to the uh, government for the insurance of uh, global and regional trade is that 
The government must engage the seed industry in a progressive dialogue to salvage the industry from deepening crisis and help them absorb the financial operational shock, midterm effect of which shall be apparent within the next six months. Uh, the short-term policy to manage import of seeds, which is essential for upcoming seasons in Pakistan because of uh, the sowing is starting from September 2020. And then the long-term planning should focus on facilitation of seed companies to produce quality hybrid seed in Pakistan and decrease the dependence on imports. Um, uh, Albert Einstein once said that in the middle of a difficulty lies an opportunity. So we can use this, uh, when, uh, the current situation uh, and turn it into an opportunity to reform the agriculture sector. Uh, and some of the uh, suggested measures include the sustainability of agriculture through mechanization to improve production. Uh, this will help create more jobs, training and relocating workers, encourage the participation of the youth, local production of uh, tractors and other modern equipment, which can be encouraged to make it uh, available at reasonable prices, uh, connecting the farmers in, uh, of the industry with the technology, manufacturing, engineering, and e-commerce, uh, which can offer a multitude of benefits, such as boosting economy, again, creating jobs and improving the uh, livelihood. Uh, the government should also play a leading role to ensure food security and control price. Directly buying from farmers, uh, pushing the middlemen out of the equation would remove, remove the barriers and deter hoarding and corruption. Uh, lack of cold storage, proper packaging of food processing capacity is one of the major reasons for food waste. Investment in these refrigerated transport and cold storage for food items and seed as well as silos for grains will help preservation for longer tenure. Uh, introduce special industrial zones in every farm district equipped with cold storages, food processing units. Uh, connected with retail chain and export uh, industries. Tax-free zones for provision of basic utilities, facilitation from setting up uh, food SMEs to export and attract expat investors. Uh, most farmers feel secure growing traditional crops such as uh, wheat, sugar cane, rice, cotton. However, diversification of products such as canned mangoes, cherry jams, uh, fruit juices, jellies, yogurts, uh, flavored yogurts, and even pickles and chutneys can help reduce waste and earn foreign exchange. Uh, we also need a uh, mechanism for improving, improving our water management, which is a key uh, factor uh, and which it contributes to about 5%. Uh, you know, the, the crops, the major crops are only contributing about 5% of the GDP at the, while at the same time consuming about 80% of the water resources. Uh, improving the nexus of agriculture, academic training, research, and technology will also play a vital role for the uh, reform in agriculture sector. Uh, in post covid scenario, we see the purchase uh, power of the farmers will be greatly reduced in the shorter term, definitely. Farmers and seed industry will be expecting some relief in taxes and subsidy on seed. Um, we have already submitted some proposals to the government for this. Supply chain cost has increased because of the shortage of transport. This will also affect the market. A local production can decrease the production of cost of farmers and you know uh, value addition of this for the seed sector. Uh, viable seed movement will of course play a very crit uh, critical factor. The transport has uh, the lockdown restriction of transport have recently been eased, so we hope this will help the movement of seed. And for uh, the food security and sustainable agriculture growth policy will be very important for Pakistan in the upcoming years. And we are really engaging the government to uh, come forward and help the seeds and the farmers, see the seed sector and the farmers uh, to help the revival of the agriculture, particularly cotton. Uh, um, I, I hope I'm within the time frame. Uh, that's about it from Pakistan. And I thank you for, once again for recording us the opportunity. Thank you very much, Dr. Salman. I think you have addressed some very good examples. And we see similar challenges with India and the plight to add for the opportunity to reform the agriculture during this time is very important. I, I think those are very good examples for other countries also, especially on the food security and 
sustainable agriculture. Thank you very much. Um, again, for the questions, please feel free to type in the Q&A box and so that we can address and send to Dr. Salman after this session. Okay, let us go back again to China. Uh, let us check a um, few seconds with Ms. Alison again. Ms. Alison, can you please um, start your presentation? Hello? Yeah. Hello? Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Can you see me? Yes. Okay. I hope this time okay. is fine. All so, right. Thank you very much for uh, uh, Dr. May. So, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wei Hongtian, the Secretary General of China National State Trade Association. I'm very happy to have the opportunity to update on China. Now I share my screen. Okay, so now I start. So my agenda uh, is same uh, as uh, Dr. Shavanda and Simon. Uh, so I go through, I go straight to the content. So China seed industry is the chief of agriculture and the national strategic and fundamental industry. We are the number one in total consumption of crop seeds in the world and the number two in the market value in the world with the approximate clay is 17.7 billion US dollars. So the total import and export in 2019 is 646 million US dollars which just takes uh, only less than 4% of the market value. So the imports, you can see the pet, uh, takes 67% uh, six, seven, while export takes uh, 33%. So if you see the right-hand chart, uh, it shows the changes of import export data in 2014 to 2019. In the past years, our import export gradually increased but our imports have always been more than export. So import, this slide shows the top 10 imported crop in import volume, value, and the main business partners we import from. So I don't want to go to the details, but the biggest import uh, crop in vo volume is rice grass seed. The largest crop in value is the vegetable seeds. USA, Japan, and Denmark at the top three countries we imported from. For the export, the biggest export crop in volume is the rice seed. The largest export crop in, in value is the vegetable seeds. So Pakistan, the Netherlands, and South Korea at the top uh, three countries we export to. So for the import requirement, so we need to apply for the right import when we, uh, before we import the seeds. Then uh, we need to apply for quarantine uh, permit. So when the seeds arrive at the uh, entry port, uh, then customers will check uh, the seeds, the quarantine testing to the inspection. So after the seeds planting in the fields, we need uh, uh, the field uh, quarantine inspection. For export requirement, uh, we need an export permit uh, before uh, the exportation. And if you export green seeds, include the, the rice, corn, wheat seeds, we need to apply for export quarter and export permit from Ministry of Commerce. So we also need to make a files with the customers, the seeds production base for the production of exported seeds. So then, of course, we need a FITO certificate uh, based on the requirement from import country. So COVID-19 was declared by WHO as a pandemic as a common threat to the human beings. So I, yesterday I got the news that there was more than 5 million uh, confirmed infection cases outside of China. So what about the situation about our anti-demic uh, uh, situation in China? As of May 15, the total confirmed numbers is more than 82,000 with uh, the death numbers is 4,633. So we took uh, only uh, two months uh, to effectively control the spread of epidemic 
by taking a very, uh, I think the most uh, strict prevention and control measures. Uh, the reasons why we can win the, uh, the anti-epidemic battles, uh, first is the quick decision-making and strong leaderships of the central government. And, and, and also we, we should thank uh, the hard work and uh, hard work of frontline uh, medical staffs, uh, firm implementation of local government at all levels are very important. The last but not least is the understanding and support of the people. <laughs> because uh, it's, it's, it's not uh, easy, uh, not allowed people to go out and get together during the Chinese New Year, but our people did. So that's the key to the victory. So overall economic and social development in China is very stable. So what about the impact on economy in China? So the impact on our economy was, was great. During the epidemic outbreak, uh, look at the quarter one, GDP fell 6.8%. The import of export goods, inter, uh, intro, uh, industrial production and food and the service industry declined. In the service industry, for example, hotel, retail sales, food and beverage, tourism are the hardest hit industry. I think that those are temporary uh, impacts. But uh, online retail, investment in e-commerce and anti-epidemic related industry grew in the first quarter. The direct impact on green production is limited, but there is a uh, big negative impact on the, uh, for the fresh agricultural products and uh, such as vegetable fruits in short term. So our government took a series of measures like provide medical uh, subsidies, ensure supply of essential agricultural and food products, stable the price and employment. So currently the resumption of the work and the production is ac accelerated. Uh, the production and supply gradually return to normal. So what the impact on our uh, industry? In the most difficult uh, the period of outbreak in the past two months, China's seed industry has suffered the same impact and difficulties that the other countries are facing right now. It, the impact runs through the whole industry chain and supply chain of the seed industry in short term, and also uh, I should a uh, long time. So, uh, su such as in the R and D, seed uh, testing, seed production, seed sales, and import export. If you look at the impact on the seed trade, import export. So, although the total import and export amount decreased by seven percent, eight seven point eight percent. The export amount increased slightly by 1.9. So I think the one of the reason it the rapid response from the seed administration bureau of Mara, which allow enterprises to submit their export permit application online. That's improve the efficiency of approval. So the most difficult uh, the difficulties in the uh, logistic and transportation, and also it's difficult to book air uh, cargo space. Air, air freight costs increase greatly. So we also saw, have some impact on our work and the communication. For example, work from home, move sales promotion activities from offline to online by uh, through the self medium platforms. Uh, virtual meetings get popular, such as our online seminar today. But uh, technical support is very important. That's why I, I cut down just now. There is uh, no impact on spring employee production and food, for, and food security. Uh, because in our country, uh, continuous increase in green production and good green reserve system play a very uh, good protection for food security uh, in China. So I want to share some measures uh, that the MARA took 
to ensure spring plowing production uh, as uh, uh, the experience for your reference. So first, uh, the MARA established a national emergency dispatching and supply group working together with uh, the other ministry like Ministry of Tra uh, Transportation, Ministry of Industrial and uh, Information Technology and other uh, department to, uh, for spring green agricultural materials. These companies was listed as key enterprises to resume production and work. Green transportation, transportation channels are open for the agricultural materials and uh, ensure uh, the breeding activities in the breeding base in, in Sanya. In addition, uh, China Seas Association and CSTA are actively involved in helping enterprises to solve the difficulties and facilitate seed movement and treat. So international, how to ensure the smooth global and regional seed trade? So international and regional organizations such as ISAF, WTO, IPPC, and APSA, they all provide provided guidance on how to respond to COVID-19 and how to mediate the impact of the epidemic. I think uh, all countries should follow the guidance. So uh, besides, we suggest to put the first priority to restore the circulation and agricultural product material, eliminate trade barriers, and maintain the stability of international agricultural products market and seed trade. So the specific measures we can take is streamline procedures, uh, simplify import-export procedures, and uh, simplify customer clearance should ensure the push to adapt e vital to improve the from us in STA. So we'll, uh, during the last session after panel discussion, you will come back and do the closing remark and then that you can add a from the CNSTA. Okay? 
But thank you very much for a very good presentation. I really like what you put all the supply chain all together and share the impact of COVID-19. And very good points from Alison updating on the, the way how can we use technology to cope with the seeds trade, like for example, uh, harmonization of the procedures, uh, e-vital, and put the put music into the online platform. And I, I believe she can address a little bit more also on the summary part, part in the last session. All right. So we already hear the overview from three national seed associations from Pakistan, China, and India. Okay, so next we will have the private sector or the, the company, uh, representative of the company who will join uh, in the panel discussion. And each one will share their own viewpoint based on what they can see uh, the impact to their business and also how can, what do they think, how, how can we cope with this situation for the post COVID-19. So let me invite our chair uh, for the panel discussion, Ms. Um, Ms. Wendy Ma, Director of Cooperation and Exchange Department of China Seed Association. Ms. Wendy, please. Thank okay, you. Okay, thanks, Dr. May. Hello, everyone. I'm Wendy from China Seed Association. Welcome to panel discussion part. Today, we invited the five state company delegates from China, India, Pakistan, to talk about the impact of COVID-19 for them. So first, uh, let me ask them to introduce themselves and their company. Uh, let's start with Mr. Jiang Sanqiao in China. Hello, Mr. Jiang. Hello. Hello, Ms. Ma. Hi, please invite yourself and your, com your company. OK. Uh, yeah, APSA president, president of China National Seed Trade Association. Uh, our participant, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Jiang Sanqiao, the deputy general manager of Winner High Tech Seed. First, I give a brief introduction of our company. Winner is one of the Chinese leading diversified agriculture group set up in 2002 covering the business of hybrid seeds, including rice, corn, wheat, cotton, vegetable, etc., and sporting agriculture services. We were listed in 2002 in Shenzhen Stock Exchange market, with a registered capital of 430 million RMB and a whole 16 holding subsidiaries in China and a lot of four abroad. We present strong position in Chinese seed sector with comprehensive capacity ranking third in Chinese seed industry. We were identified as one of the most important Chinese player on hybrid rice research in the overseas market. We were awarded honorable title of Chinese national key leading enterprise in agriculture and industrialization and a Chinese national high technical rights. Every year, we provide nearly uh, for 8,000 pounds of hybrid rice seeds to overseas market. It means there are more than 2 million pounds of overseas rice product, production uh, rice are produced with our seed. We are honored to make a certain contribution to global food security with the winner seed. In 2018, Sino-TM became our largest shareholder. And now Winner has become one of the important pillars of the Syngenta Group with a strategic focus on hybrid rice seed. In future, we will dedicate to realize great potential in the scope of seed supply and agriculture services to serve more farmers and to support with global pressure on food supply chain. Thanks. Okay, Ms. thank you, Mr. Jiang. Okay. Thank you. And uh, next, we will have Julie from uh, Qingfa Hersheng. Hi, Julie. Hi, Wendy. Can you Please hear me? Please invite yourself. Yes, yes, good. Please invite, introduce yourself and your company. Okay, thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Zhu Xiaobo, General Manager of the Wuhan Qingfa Hersheng State Company. My friends call me Julie. 
Before I give the introduction of the, our company, please allow me to take this opportunity to express my heart filled thanks to the friends who have helped me, my family, and our company during the pandemic. You raise me up, I will never forget your kindness. So, Wuhan Qinfa Hesen Seed Company is located in Wuhan, central of China, a high and low technology enterprise focusing on hybrid technology and the variety improvement. We devote to the responsibility to the food secret doing the professional breeding of the target country, exporting the rice seed, oil crop seed, vegetable seed, uh, about the 20 countries such as the Pakistan, Australia, Brazil, USA, Bangladesh, Vietnam, India. We also import the foreign things as the biggest distribution in central China. We are very happy and proud when our business partners express their appreciation, appreciation and satisfaction. We are delighted to work shoulder to shoulder with you to promote the health development of the global seed industry. So I'm very happy and thank you for your time. Next one. Okay, thank you, Julie. Uh, next, we will have Mr. Atava from India. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. First of all, uh, I'd like to thank APSA, Dr. Tahir, the President, APSA President, and the Secretariat, and Dr. May for giving me this op opportunity to be a part of the panel. And uh, as we are going through the pandemic, it's been a learning for us. We are a 55-year-old seed company that specializes in vegetables, field crops, contract production, and we also do ornamental plants. And um, I'd like to you know, spend more time probably discussing later on about the post-COVID uh, situation, which is uh, quite uh, unclear as of now. But uh, we have uh, gone through a lot in the last uh, two months. We have seen many uh, variations happening with logistics, with transport, with the accessibility to markets and reaching our customers. And we hope uh, with the lockdown being uh, further lifted after the 31st of May, that uh, things will start uh, looking better. But having said that, the Indian government has uh, taken steps to ensure that in phase by phase, we start transporting our seed to the markets. And also some states have been very proactive which has really helped us. So I'm glad to be a part of this panel here and uh, we can discuss more points when the discussion comes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Atava. We, we were, uh, were glad you're here to continue our discussion. So next year we will invite it, uh, Mr. Uh, Singotavelu Singo from India. Hi everyone, uh, I am Sandil Nadan Singhotvel, Executive Chairman of Axan High Wedge uh, Private Limited, which is one of the fastest growing vegetable seed company in India. And uh, we are, uh, in fact, uh, ranked seventh in the access to seed in the Southeast Asia and uh, regionally, almost all, we regionally in India as number one. And we are uh, doing uh, research in 17 crops and we have products more than 150 uh, varieties. We have uh, uh, research centers right from down south Bangalore, Chona and up to Kulu for coal crops. And we are one of the only company which is uh, doing many difficult crops like cabbage, cauliflower and all that. 
um uh we are very we have a very strong team which has uh, made this company grow from scratch to this level and i am very happy to be in this panel i thank absa for inviting me to be the panelist in this group i'm looking forward for the discussion about the post covid situation thank you okay i uh, thank you for the introduction uh, china india okay thank you for everyone to join us uh, panel discussion uh, china india pakistan are all developing country with large population so agriculture is the foundation for each country uh, each country has different uh, sowing season for china spring sowing season started from march and now we almost finished and for here the main sowing season started from next year month okay i think we we miss one panelist from pakistan oh sorry <laughs> oh sorry i'm i'm so, so sorry so sorry for the president <laughs> okay let's, let's, i i i think Let's let me welcome our president. I'm sorry, president. <laughs> we almost missed our the most part, important part. Let, let you, uh, Mr. <laughs> Salimi. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you very much, all participants, and good afternoon. Uh, I'm the Taj Salimi, CEO of uh, Harisans Private Limited, a seed company in Pakistan, and also now president of EFSA. We deal in uh, vegetable seeds, field crop seeds, and high efficiency irrigation systems. We, pr we produce seeds not only in Pakistan, but also collaborate with many uh, international companies in India, China, Thailand, USA. Besides hybrid seeds, we. Expand my knowledge. Which includes off-season vegetable production in greenhouses, seedling business, and uh, now recently we have added uh, hermetic technologies. Hermetic technology is very important for this type of uh, pandemic when uh, you have a lot of secure, food security issues. So we'll be keep topic to, uh, talking on this uh, topic once uh, this proceed our uh, today's discussions. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you, thank you, President. Uh, thank you. Uh, so now, okay, now we will go to the, the next part. Uh, for uh, each country, agriculture is the foundation for each country, and uh, but each every country have their different uh, sowing season. For China, the sowing season start from March to uh, to May. Now we almost finished, and for India, the main sowing season start from next month. And for Pakistan, the sowing season started from September. So seed companies may uh, face different season, season and in different period. So and maybe they have now they have different challenge. So we will we will have our the first question: What are the difficulties and the problems your comp your company face, and the measures you take, and the experience you want to share? Uh, so let's from start from Mr. Jiang Sanqiao. Hi, Mr. Jiang, please open your microphone. Yeah. Yes. Okay, please. now it's okay. Okay, I, I will share many our activities, our challenges and our strategies, uh, but also some of our uh, our. Uh, our uh, compete, the compete in China. Uh, after, break, after, after the outbreak of the academic COVID-19, China has adopted a very uh, strict traffic and personnel control measures, uh, which lead to a 40% high of uh, manpower cost and nearly 20%, 200% high of transportation costs than uh, before. The ban of international travel made us unable to dispatch breeders and technicians abroad, which caused a bigger challenge for our company's uh, overseas research and production program. Uh, we know has strictly complied with the guideline policies and opinions of the national health and uh, epidemic prevention system 
under the premise of a normal company operation activity. There is no any person infected among the or domestic and overseas staff. At the same time, we know took various measures to ensure the normal production and exporting. Till middle of April, Vino has accomplished nearly 4,000 tons of hybrid rice seed export, uh, including the quantity we export to Pakistan. Due to the impact of the academic, the overseas seed production has been decreased in quantity. Considering this, in short term, Vino has increased the domestic seed production, which with uh, an increase of 30% over the same period of last year to meet the overseas demand. Uh, with the impact of COVID-19, uh, Vino team has struggled to overcome all difficulties to accomplish the overseas production plan. And we are proud to announce that we have successfully uh, completed the major seed production mission in African Angola. Considering the global academic situation in long term, we now has a plan to reinforce the overseas investment on localization of seed business, including breeding, seed production, and marketing, with more than $200 million budget in the near future. I also noted that uh, Pakistani uh, representatives mentioned uh, local seed production is very important. So we should also strengthen our overseas production. At the same time, Vino has organized the donation programs both domestic and overseas. In China, Vino has carried out a safer donation and technical guidance for four years. Up to now, we have finished the donation in 23 towns and countries, countries sorry, with a total worth of several million yuan. In abroad, Vino has donated epidemic prevention materials, including masks and shoes, to countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, Iran, Philippines, and some African countries through air treatment. Of course, all this was, was uh, uh, our Chinese government has uh, taken very positive measures to ensure the supply chain of agricultural input and to encourage the rice growing uh, area which need to arise soon area this year has increased substantially compared with the same period in previous year. And consequently, to ensure the safety of grain production in China. Uh, Ms. Ma, that's the information I want to share. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Zhang Sanqiao. And uh, next we will, we will invite Julie, uh, just as she mentioned, that she based in Wuhan, so. It's really maybe more difficult for her. So, hello, Julie. Have opened the volume. Yes, please. Hello. Yes, we can hear. We yeah, can Wendy. Hear. Yes, can... we can hear you now. Please open your okay. camera. Okay. Now, okay. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Please. So. I think uh, well, uh, I think that I I had the experience uh, for the for this situation. So I think the main is the transportation. Transportation costs very difficult in domestic and international market. Pause. Ah, since pandemic, the time the train is busy. The business traveling has been forced to stop. And uh, second, I think the you know, policy. In case of the uh, COVID nineteen, the import the policies from the many countries are temporarily changed. Not only caused the increase of the cost, but also made it very difficult to meet the requirements of the drone. I think it increased the cost. Uh, and other, I think the way 
made uh, the, uh, uh, the same uh, situation uh, difficult uh, with uh, Mr. Jiang Sanqiao. Yeah, thank you. Wendy? Thank you, Julie. Thank you. Uh, so next uh, we will invite it to Mr. Atava from India. Hello. Okay, hi. So thank you again. And then uh, the mainly uh, what we've experienced initially was uh, the fear factor was widespread because this was a pandemic and we hadn't really seen this before, maybe not in our lifetime and maybe not in the lifetime of many people. So there was a first part that started was the panic mode, which uh, we had to deal with. I'm talking about, you know, generally our organization and also people around us in the industry, because I've been in touch with my colleagues across a few companies. And the first part was the human factor, how we deal with them and how we help the whole team to cope with it. And this is very relevant, especially for young uh, seed people out there who are watching today or who will watch the reruns is how to cope with the situation. And uh, that was the first step. Secondly, of course, a uh, lot of our work in the research farms and plots, we couldn't go to gather data because the movement of people was a problem. And you know we had to really do our best, and we still didn't get a lot of data, which uh, you know is uh, very precious for any seed company, especially when you have your R and D trials and product development trials. Um, so that was a real challenge for us to. I mean, we couldn't do much about it, and I think next year onwards we'll have to plan even better. But how can you, you know, really plan for a pandemic? Because we have no one even envisaged something like this would happen. So we had to deal with that. And we are now this year, we are being a little more cautious and trying to do things in a different way. And also the other thing is uh, many companies were affected by the migrant workers who went back home because of uh, they didn't have work to do and there was no work available. So they moved back and this uh, has kind of been a setback uh, for the industry, for a lot of the farmers in many areas. And uh, these are the learnings that, you know, that we'll have to come out with and see how in the future, if something like this happens, we'll have to cope with it. Uh, the final learning for us was to think differently. And uh, one of the questions asked by, I believe, Dr. Arvind Kapoor, the CEO of uh, High Veg, uh, was very clear. He says, are things going to change post COVID-19? Definitely, because this has altered our entire perception, the activities that the company is doing. And uh, it's really, you know, rejigged the whole thinking process for all companies. And I believe personally that this is things are not going to remain the same when the lockdown finishes. In fact, we, we should also, it's like a metamorphosis that organizations and individuals will have to do to kind of get to the next level. And maybe it redefines the way we live our lives and redefines the way we will conduct business going forward. Thank you. Thank you. So next year we will invite it, uh, Mr. Sengotavalu. Hello, Mr. Mr. Yeah, my uh, host has to uh, may help me in starting the video. Okay. Because it's still not starting. It says the uh, host has disabled it. Yeah. yeah, now it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thank you, Mara. So, uh, yeah, this question has been very uh, uh, important because, like, you know, uh, uh, every industry, as uh, uh, Santos said, it's the first of its kind for everybody who is, who is living now, I think. 
so uh, and uh, every uh, there are a lot of challenges lot of unknown things how this uh, this virus is going to behave and so many opinions on how it is going to behave in different temperatures different food habits hay ages and even immunity levels and all this so it's very very important for us to think of two main things as a company uh, one is in 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 india or any farmer is not going to leave his land uncultivated when the season comes so we need to reach the uh, seeds to him at the right time so that he has to uh, sow so uh, so that is one big challenge and of course we had uh, like sivendra said we had to impress upon the government saying that this is an essential activity so that all our processes can be done in spite of all these uh, uh, challenges so uh, we should thank the government uh, for accepting that and then letting us do what we have to do so that the seeds reach the farmer second thing is all about our r&d activities which are all in the prime time of collection of data we have to do that these are these were all the two challenges which we had in front of us at the same time the safety and security of our employees are very very important so we had taken a uh, first to look at the safety we had uh, created some kind of an ambience where apart from you know as everybody suggested uh, on a, um a mask or social distancing or sanitizing uh, all that we we took a very strong uh, you know decision that we will not employ any people above 50 so that there is can be a danger of uh, mortality in case of infection second is every hour they they will be sanitizing their hands and uh, uh, hands so that with keeping an alarm there so they will be reminded every hour so that they will be sanitizing third is that if temperatures were tested for each person thrice a year uh, thrice a day so that we are continuously monitoring the health of that particular person four we were also trying to fortify the immunity using whatever suggested vitamin c and turmeric and neem and all that that is again and and ag- again one more thing most important is that these things are not habits of the labor or anybody till now so we were, we made it a practice to brief all these employees every day so that they will be reminded because we don't want them to forget it and then we don't want them to get infected so having built this uh, uh, you know ambience now next challenge is bringing the people labor so uh, so as uh, santosh was saying the fear factor was very very high about the uh, in the villages and luckily we had a good uh, goodwill among them because we thanks to our csr activities which we have done our cross so uh, that gave us the gave them the confidence that we are very sincere and genuine in taking care of the employees of the organization so that trust helped us to bring the labor to our this one and we also motivated them by providing extra salary so that they can uh, it will also help them so so having and uh, in especially in plants we when the uh, you know we also did something we tried to make some temporary arrangements so that the labor can stay here inside and then food were uh, uh, provided and then so that you no know, uh, multiple shifts can be run so that the uh, you know we are able to process all our seeds and then we were able to send the materials on time to this and we were also Uh, practicing some kind of pranayama and all that for the people who are staying inside the uh, uh, inside the uh, factories uh, so that uh, no 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 infection cannot uh, can come to them no it's we are try, we were trying everything possible so that to avoid a, a, any infections and in fact you know i would should also appreciate all the employees including senior manage senior management staff you know started pitching in for uh, uh, completing the packing all on on time so uh, we, i should appreciate the kind of tremendous teamwork which happened in our organization the next the next challenge is reaching these things to the market 
market so you know the transports were not available no driver was willing to tra- tra- drive the trucks and the courier was not willing to operate in fact as a group we would say we, are, we can i can probably say we were the first one to use the railway services of india to move the move, move the seats from salem to uh, punjab and uh, later we also we were able to impress upon the indian postal service we can do, uh, no we can uh, we can engage with which we can engage uh, speed post and then cour- courier our vegetable seed services even here we had to have hire there were only few people who were willing to ply their vehicle so with the same vehicle we have to move the material from directly to the distributors so we need to aggregate the orders plan and then plan the route map so that they the transportation will be very efficient so that they can come back faster and take the next load and they go so there was an excellent uh, coordination and meticulous planning that was happening in our organization because of which we are we were able to you know uh, meet the both the objective of achieve, reaching the seeds to the farmer as well as our data collection for the uh, uh, for our r&d that's it thank you thank you so next we will invite uh, mr salimi from pakistan Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Pakistan is uh, presently self-sufficient in major staple uh, crops, ranked at eighth in wheat, tenth in rice, fifth in sugarcane, and fourth in milk production. But still, only 63% of the country's households are are uh, food secure. That is the fact. But this COVID-19 has created serious concerns on the food security of this even 63% people. When we talk uh, about the effect of COVID, initially in Pakistan, direct effect of COVID on seed industry was not much. And the same was on our company. Because the reason was simple that uh, most of the spring crops were already sown. But definitely, there is a huge indirect impact due to lockdown. Though our government exempted agriculture from lockdown from initial days, but due to non-availability of transport and labor, this exemption was impracticable. Our team provided online guidelines and follow-ups to the farmers. In R&D, we engaged farmers and collaborated with farmers uh, through online systems. But in spite of all these efforts, we found it difficult when many vegetable and ornamental crops could not be harvested in time due to non-availability of uh, labor. And if someone managed to harvest, they could not transport to wholesale or retail markets. Due to clear of flights and borders, export was also not possible. Uh, farmers had to bear big losses uh, because uh, uh, consumption of vegetables was exceptionally low. Marriage halls, restaurants, event venues, tourism, poultry feed industry, everything was closed and it's all affected to farmer produce and they were unable to recover even their costs. Their cash flows is badly affected, resulting putting pressure to seed companies who normally work on credit. Our main crop at this time was wheat, but unfortunately this year due to wheat uh, weather condition, yield is low. And now there is threat of shortage of wheat in country. Government introduced anti-holding bill and no one is allowed to store wheat more than one ton which created panic situation. Though SAP and industry worked hard, but still seed procurement was also effective and availability for next season will be a, a real challenge. Shortage of uh, flights and high cost of air and sea freight will increase the cost of seed and in autumn crop. So the reflection of these low prices and high cost will reflect in autumn uh, sowing time. Farmers are expected to move to easy and long duration crops. And in spite of availability of good seed, demand of these high value seeds will remain low. Usage of farmers own saved seed will be more, which will definitely affect the yield of uh, autumn uh, crops. Other challenge which we are facing now is the recent lo- locust attacks, which is still uncontrollable. 
the government is trying its best to control but still it is big threat unless all governments in region work together and take measures simultaneously rice growing season is starting next month last year high temperature caused sterility issue and yield was less but now farmers are more careful and dealing their sowings hope it will help and we will be able to get a good return in the rice crop which will inject little bit more money in the agriculture sector and which will energize little bit more for the seed industry as well food security need much more focus in logistical planning it is pity that on one side farmers are forced to plow their crops without covering recovering their input cost and other side households are forced to buy at expensive prices marketing system need to real need real attention for sustainability of both i hope today's discussion will help to bring good suggestion for industry as well as for the regulators thank you very much okay thank you uh, mr salimi uh, yes transportation liberalize and uh, cost increase process delay and uh, and so on as the same uh, challenges we face the good news is the government have taken uh, a lot of measures and the seed companies do have a good measures to to share now today and uh, so seed as a source of agriculture uh, we are the basis so how to ensure food security and sustainable agriculture after the crisis how to ensure state movement globalization so this is our the next the, the question we we are discuss so now we will start uh, from mr jiang san chiao hello mr jiang hi okay yeah man this is really good good question uh, and it also the duty of seed industry to raise a uh, good advice uh, for the government to cope with the bad situation right now we know we have all we have noticed that the governments and the international institutions are becoming increasingly worried about the growing constraints on uh, access to food around the world because coronavirus disrupts the economy and the new works without the income for tenants uh, i also heard many people lose job the loss they cannot get money to purchase sufficient food we know that global stock of staple in staples including grains and pulses are, are deemed to be sufficient while supply chains are become under pressure we suggest to guard against any unjustified restrictive measures that could lead to excessive food price story in international market and the threat in the global food security for example vietnam ever announced the export ban for rice that you know is low good for the food world security but also where means farmers are also suffer because you know this food is very sensitive uh, rice is very sensitive if nobody export farmer cannot say a good price so as the government we really need to justify this policy of course vietnam already had justified so any measures taken by government to limit the covid to line chain spread should be targeted property late transparent and temporary and do not create a necessary barriers to trade and disruption to the disrupt disruption to the global food supply chain you know we know quality seeds are the biggest contributor to food security we hope that all governments will formulate positive policies to ensure the operation of domestic sales and the international trade of seed and the movement of seed we hope that the seed association will play a positive role offer advice and a suggestion to the government and coordinate the government with the enterprise to help 
mobilize all parties to deal with the impact of the epidemic. On the food and agriculture sector in a rapid and innovative way. We are glad to see that some countries have formulated very active policies to support food security. Besides the information today we get from the speakers, some other countries like the Philippines, Philippine government proposed an additional 8.5 billion budget in April to increase local rice production. Bangladesh government has also allocated 50 billion DACA on agriculture input during the academic period. Hope that the OCH, this association will play a more important role in calling on government to formulate positive policies to deal with the, the virus. Thanks. Chairman. Yeah, Hello, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jiang. The next chair, uh, we will invite the Julie. Yeah. Hello. Wendy? Yes, we can hear you, yes. Uh, Wendy, please open the... Yes, we can hear you now, yes. Okay. Um, for the measures and the method, I, I think uh, the first, we provide the necessary protective the measures to employees introduce psychological uh, confirming and the technical training uh, courses to enhance their confidence in overcoming uh, epidemic and uh, working. The second, uh, how to solve the problem that we cannot meet the customer face to face. So we using the new medium. We open online the classes to guide and serve our customer. So we get uh, the positively response from the, our uh, from the name. The third, the state export the trade of the Qingfa state company of course. So for the 60%. So we act uh, very fast during the early stage of the outbreak of the uh, COVID-19. We informed our customers all the information about the development of the COVID-19 uh, in China. At, at the same time, we share the uh, with our experience of the anti covid 19 So we negotiated with them in advance to formulate annual plan, annual plan with them. They are the state import and the delivery. So let the customer very clear how to do. The fourth, pay more attention to efficiency of the scientific the research and the production. Adjust the short-term production plan according to the marketing situation. This is our company method. Uh, for your question as to how to ensure the food security, I think uh, it's very great and it's a good question. So I think my answer is, this is a very great question. Now, there is a voice of the return. I think it is the cage painted with the gold. Here, I'd like to share some of my thoughts on seed globalization. How the first, how to establish the operation mechanism under the crisis, including the um, logistic, photo sanitary, technical communication, and so on, all the 
uh, deliver and uh, the treat business, state business. And second, how can international organizations raise positive the voice to uh, promote uh, the global globalization of the seed industry? This is more important for the big or small seed company. The third, during the period of the outbreak of the COVID-19, countries in the world should uh, adopt positive the policies to protect and help the seed companies to overcome the difficult situation. Uh, I think uh, uh, latest uh, the seminar, Mr. Chen Weigong from the State Trade Association, she shared China's experience for the state industry. Yeah, uh, that's all. Thank you. That's the idea from me. Thank you for your listening. Okay, thank you, Julie. Thank you. So next we will invite it, uh, uh, Mr. Atava from India. Okay, in the uh, post-COVID scenario, uh, one of the first things that has to happen is, uh, I believe that we should not aspire to go back to the past and try to do things that the way they were being done. And in order to do this, I think it starts from the organizations, the companies, um, you know, this, the seed associations, both central and regional, and the institutions and the government, they'll all have to come together to come up with newer policies that are uh, business friendly. This is very much needed for India to emerge as a major player, which we already are, and for us to further develop as a nation, this is very important. And I believe the government is taking a lot of steps towards this, but this has to be well orchestrated and coherent. Everyone has to come together for the common cause that is for the development of agriculture, the seed industry, and most importantly, the farmers of India. So this is a very, very important uh, point uh, from uh, at least from our company. And uh, as an industry uh, individual, a professional, I'd like to believe that this is the most important thing. It can't be fragmented, especially in India, the agriculture is the state subject. So all the states and the center will have to kind of come together and take a lot of inputs from very learned uh, stalwarts of the industry, senior members who've really been there for a long time and who've traveled globally, who have the research depth and all other uh, you know uh, uh, exposures to make this happen and this is where uh, i think the key is going to be how we go forward and how we change and adapt to the change that uh, the covid-19 scenario has thrown and it's, it's a challenge that's been thrown in front of india in front of the world and uh, in front of our company, like other companies, as we mentioned, you know, there's so many issues happening. The other thing is uh, the freight costs are really going through the roof. They're almost double now, the air freight. These sort of things will definitely have an impact on uh, the seed cost because when the cost keeps building up, your cost of goods sold uh, goes up and that's uh, going to be a challenge. So I, I believe even the people in aviation must understand uh, or the operators, Therein must understand that this is agriculture based and we are trying to send seed to different markets, domestic markets, export markets. And if your logistics costs are just going to go through the roof, uh, you know, like um, uh, what, what would the word I want to use is, you know, I think we, we shouldn't be opportunists uh, in this uh, situation. If we want to get out of it, if we want to keep things going the way they are. And in India, where uh, total agriculture is 14% uh, of the GDP, uh, from one of the articles that I recently saw, I think we need to get those numbers up. And we are 50 to 60% agrarian, and the seed is a very important part of that. The farmers are a very important part of that. The supply chain, the transportation, 
the whole gamut uh, of uh, things involved, you know. So I feel uh, post-COVID, uh, we really will have to get back to the drawing board and carve out a very nice policy, uh, enabling policy for the Indian seed industry to emerge strong, to compete at global levels. And also another thing we need to do now is we can't, uh, as our prime minister has said, we have to look at self-sustaining, self-reliant, but also at, with a global perspective, which means we'll have to have a lot of enabling policies in the harmonization of uh, laws, phytosanitary, plant pathology, you know, try to get on the same level so that business is much easier to conduct. And I'm sure that, you know, there's also my dear colleague Sendel is here. He will also have to add to this. So this is what I'd like to say. And um, before I wind up uh, the, this point, the most important thing would be, will continue to be the safety of the people of our company and the people working in the industry. That's still important. And also how to guide the company into a newer realm, into a newer uh, era. This is going to be the challenge for all the CEOs who are out there. And I'm sure they'll agree with me because it's really transformed us in many ways, uh, more than one way as an organization, this incident. Thank you very much. Thank you. So next we will invite Mr. Sengotavalu. Hello. Yeah. Hope you can see me. Yes, yes, we can. Yeah, thank you. So thank you. I think Santosh has uh, you know, really elaborated many steps uh, operationally what we need to do from Indian seed perspective and um, I, I cannot agree more with uh, in those aspects but as a seed company towards uh, the sustainability sustainable agriculture and food sector what is that we need to do is something which would like to add to what uh, Santosh has said so basically like you know uh, when we when we talk about sustainable agriculture and sustainability in environment I think uh, everybody agrees that the nature has cured itself. Mother Nature um, uh, and uh, the air, so air is becoming become very clear uh, 25 kilometers away. The structures are 25 kilometers away are very much visible now. The rivers are running very clean. And then somebody says even ozone layer has repaired, uh, repaired itself. So such is the kind of pollution and many things which we are doing to the environment. And I definitely, we have a responsibility in our generation to give a sustainable environment uh, through agriculture, next generations. Similarly, like, you know, if you look at um, the other scenario in this COVID, this one is that a like, country like in India, which is very highly populated in 60 days of no work, no, no pay, no, 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 I mean, the food materials are moving here and there and all that still. We have not seen the death, any death on starvation. But we have seen death because of lack of immunity. So we need to ask ourselves, what is lacking now? Are we still talking about food security or nutrition security, which will improve our immunity? So that is another area which we need to ask ourselves. Now, as a, from the seed, uh, a seed being the you know real, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, great powerful solution for these two things. That's what I would rather say, because seed can be packed with all the capabilities and given to the seed, uh, given to the farmers to minimize ma minimize the damage of uh, the environment or improving the nutrition in the agricultural produce. So if you look at you know, the best example for the uh, minimizing the agri uh, environmental impact is Bt cotton. Imagine in India, more than 50% of this pesticide uh, sprayed was for that one single pest and then that 
dramatically came down the load on the soil which called, became much lesser and the predators were not killed that much so which will definitely help the agriculturists to do some kind of an agri sustainable agriculture uh, second thing if you look at the nutrition nutrition again if our breeders have to change the focus from you no know, just other not, not just other traits which are very important which is very important commercially for the farmers but also the nutrition in each vegetable seeds so if we are if we are able to do this and if we uh, then the both of this sustainability and food security as well as the nutritional security can be addressed so uh, in my opinion now this is very now it is becoming urgent for the breeder community to start looking at it but are they free to do that are they constrained to do that if you look at if you have to do this they have to wait into all the plant breeding innovative technologies and uh, tools and uh, these things will definitely these in uh, pbis will definitely help the breeders to advance bringing out these kind of products but unfortunately the uh, policy environment in our country is still not conducive for that so now, now i i think the policy makers have to start looking at these uh, pbis very positively and uh, uh, make changes as required in uh, for these kind of uh, pbis in the policies so that the future can be more sustainable more uh, food security and nutrition security can be achieved this is one part of it the next one which i would like to see this is uh, with the, all the social distancing restriction on travel and so many uh, other uh, challenges reaching out to the farmers are going to become more and more difficult so the digitization is going to be the in thing and uh, we we might see lot of digital modern digital tools getting utilized in going forward which will be inevitable so that will start coming in blooming and booming and this will definitely disrupt the traditional way of reaching to uh, uh, farmers both in logistics supply chain or even in extension works so i think as as the companies we have to internally create organization dy dynamics and development to handle these things in the future so i think uh, these are all apart from what santosh i uh, said these are all the futuristic things which i can think of uh, which we need to uh, address or start adapting ourselves and adopting these things in the future thank you okay thank you so next we will invite mr salimi from pakistan once again uh, thank you wendy i really appreciate very good suggestions from all over our uh, panelists and uh, these are very important suggestions which uh, will help to uh, plan some strategy for the future i will add just a few of them health as you know health and food is always together like health agriculture must be declared as front line warriors for any pandemic situation Uh, Tahir, can can uh, can you please turn on your camera? We cannot see you. Okay. Thank you. So, Absa may take me to uh, collaborate with the other organizations in agriculture and make the awareness of about the people about this uh, importance of agriculture as frontline uh, warriors. At this stage, the most important thing is the capacity building of financial capacity building of the small farmers. so if we push our governments to help small farmers for their liquidity support so they can sow next season crop with the good seeds and good practices in agriculture everything starts from seeds lot of credits is given by the seed companies to the farmers so i will suggest with the governments to pick up the interest cost of the seed industry and uh, give support to seed industry by picking this uh, additional cost which they are bearing due to extended period and uh, everyone talk about green channels which is which should be now uh, we should think uh, strongly on this uh, aspect 
and we should support this idea of a green channel, which should not be only within the countries, but within the region also. And this green channel should be work automatically during these type of uh, lockdowns, and uh, it should be away from any political disputes and political preferences. So that should be under some umbrella that have been protected with these type of uh, uh, issues. Uh, logistic and planning and packaging need more focused planning for this type of issues. So we can address in time and we can hold our uh, uh, logistical measures very aggressively if this type of situation is created anywhere. Uh, we have also need to find out an online trading platforms, and EPSA might, might be the first one who will need to provide this type of uh, trading platform for the, not only for the region but for the uh, other part of the world. Similarly, governments should also have a, an online platform for harmonization of their rules and regulations and FITO requirements, which sometimes makes a uh, more problematic in this type of uh, uh, pandemic and which is time consuming and which is very difficult for the stakeholders to address in time. And if lockdown is prolonged, then it will not uh, support seed industry at all and the sowing season will be passed away. So we should push our governments and our regional associations to provide this harmonization on the rules and regulations which can support the industry. And at the end, uh, one more thing is about the farming community. So this is the key time for the seed industry to support the farming community who is suffering a lot for uh, their produce, which they are unable to sell at uh, even recover their prices. So if any joint platform is uh, made under APSA or some other organization, we can offer our uh, extra uh, stocks to farmers so they can have their in-time sowing for autumn crops. I don't think still we will be able to manage all these stocks uh, for these uh, autumn crops because this still lockdown is not cleared and restricted. There are a lot of restrictions in sea freight and airlines have not started working. So most of crops will uh, suffer this, uh, this period. So these are a few suggestions from my side. I hope uh, with all these suggestions, Dr. May will summarize and will share all the members. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Salimi. Thank you, uh, everyone to join the panel discussion. Yes, agriculture is very important for us. And uh, I, from my side, we think the, we need to co keep cooperation uh, from international organizations such as APSA, it is very good to host uh, this seminar and also for uh, national government, state associations, state uh, companies, we keep uh, cooperation. And the next part is also important for innovation. State companies uh, uh, keep innovation to bring new multiplier, more technology tools to bring new varieties to save safeguard our food security. And also for government to need plant, uh, supply, uh, plant variety protection policies to ensure the, uh, the state companies, the innovation can win, uh, income. Uh, so thank you again for, uh, for joining us. Uh, I see there is some questions in, our, uh, in the Zoom. Uh, so for time limited, we don't have time. So thank you, thank you again. So next time we are going to meet Dr. May. Thank you very much, Ms. Wendy, and I would like to thank all the panelists. I think the information today is very good, and I think it's good best practices. I hear many good keywords like uh, food security, nutrition security, and it's very fascinating to hear that the seed companies are thinking also how can you manage the human resources. Like uh, because this will become very challenging, also especially for you know the, the newcomer into the seed industry or the, the young generation who just joined into the seed industry. How can they cope with this situation? I think everything can be uh, you know on the summary will be shared to all the audiences in the next two weeks. We we need time to you know to get uh, everything wrapped up. 
and on the question we get very good recommendation on the seats on the international seats rate thank you very much i i think i can mention the name dr arvin and also we get good question from mr Ubaka and uh mr koshibe also suggests on the seat inventory management in this circumstance and um we have also question from uh, dr sini sini mr uh I'm sorry, we got a question from, I'm sorry for the name, from the Srinivasa Rao. We will address everything and thank you very much for a very good recommendation. So next I would like to again invite uh, Ms. Allison to give the closing remark and she would like to share also the, the last summary of her report from the China National Seeds Trade Association that uh, we have missed in the presentation session. Okay, thank you very much, and I would like to invite uh, Ms. Alison back. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. May. I hope this time the connection is good enough. Uh, we can see her. Okay, Alison, are you ready? Can we check your voice one more time? Can you see the slides? Okay. Not yet, uh, Alisa, not yet. Uh, Alison, we cannot hear you so well. Oh. Okay, okay, now we can see your slide deck. So, uh, the talk about post COVID 19 scenario. On the macro level, there is uncertainty of the epidemic situation because countries have different pre prevention and control measures. The spread of the epidemic is gradually controlled in some country, while the number of people infected in some country are still increasing. So the time when the epidemic can be controlled is uncertain. So WTO and uh, IMF all predicted the trade will greatly decline, and the global economy is, is, is expected to experience the worst recession since the Great Depression in 2020. So I think uh, we have uh, the opportunity and challenges, but I think uh, we have more opportunities than challenges. The recovery of market demand and global sea trade, we still need some time. The eliminating the impact of COVID-19 on the global sea trade is really depend on the countries when the countries can get the outbreak under control. So the opportunities we have a new working way, the video meetings, telecom will become normal. But I think face-to-face uh, -face meetings cannot replace. The innovative business model include digital uh, agricultural e-commerce with uh, uh, integrated with uh, 5G, big data, other information technology will be accelerating. For the food security reason and the plant health concern, I think uh, biotechnology will be uh, applied, accelerate, uh, accelerated to apply to ensure the food secur security because we need plant breeding innovation to develop more new trees and better pest and disease resistance. So Hi, Alison. Alison, we, we lost you again. We lost your voice again. Uh, no, I... All right. I think um, 
again it's the connection problem and we are actually a bit delayed than our schedule already for 16 minutes i think this slide uh, that alison has shared is very powerful slide and yeah everyone can get this uh presentation from the from the section one okay we will publish on the Master website and also from the China National Seed Association website. So, Alison, are you no. okay with oh, the okay. voice now? Yes. All right. I so, I will, uh, hello, Alison. Yes. Can you hear me? Not really. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry that, uh, for the connection, uh, Alison. Maybe I I may need to take back to the floor and uh, give a big, quick wrap up for today and and tomorrow for the audiences. Okay. All right. Uh, so this is our first session that we uh, have done for. Today, I really, you know, need me on behalf of the organizers. We do really apologize for any technical issues that we have. We will keep that and improve for the section um, tomorrow. All right. So for today, I would like to thank all the organizers actually from the China National Seed Association, all the staff, and especially the president, Waipo Song, Mr. Waipo Song, and Mr. Takir Salim, as the president, all the speakers. Uh, first, Dr. Shivendra Bajal, the Executive Director from the Federation of the Industry of India, FSII. Um, Ms. Allison, of course, she is also the, the main organizer. Without her support, this cannot be run smoothly in the agenda. And I would like to thank Mr. Salman Asiskan, Secretary General uh, from the Association of, of Pakistan. And very importantly, I would like to thank each panelist who actually dedicate uh, their personal time to give very fruitful information during panel discussion. So first, um, I would like to thank the panelists from India, Mr. Santos Atawa, Chairman and Man Managing Director from Indo-American Hybrid Seeds, Mr. Sentinental from the Chairman of uh, Ascent Hybrids Limited, Mr. Tahir Salini from Pakistan, CEO of Hutchison's Limited. Um, Ms. Julie, Gen General Manager of Wuhan Kingfa um, Persian Seed Limited. Yeah, and Mr. Jian Sanchi, Deputy President of In of High Tech Seed. Thank you very much, everyone. And more important, thank you very much, all the audiences today. Thanks for giving the patience and all the recommendations. Again, I would like to share that everything will be retrieved and put in the summary report. Thank you, and I hope everyone stay safe and come back and to see us again tomorrow. We still have more countries. Uh, you can hear the update from Australia, from okay. Japan, South Korea, South Korea Philippines, and Thailand. So please stay tuned. The session will start at 1 p.m. Bangkok time. All right. Thank you very much. Please take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe, stay blessed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.